Welcome everyone. I hope you're doing good. My name is Bart Wondermate and I'm, and I'm your mentor for this project. So started from today, we're going to learn a lot of cool stuff about trading and investing and especially about technical analysis. I made a huge plan like roadmap for beginners and we're going to learn a lot of stuff. Okay, started from understanding the main concepts of the market and ended by in-depth uh, technical indicators and creating of your own strategies. But there is one but that is not really cool for beginners. Like, unfortunately, we can't start our lectures from technical information, like how to read the market structure, how to use candlesticks, I don't know, like how to use MACD indicator or so. We can't do that. Why? Because to understand all that, stuff we need to learn the basics of this industry so that's why i made for you three boring lectures like first one will be today second one tomorrow and third one will be on wednesday so we're going to learn all that basic stuff and if you think that it's not really important and you can miss that information and start from a uh, technical one uh, you're absolutely wrong no Please uh, be patient with that three lectures. Today, I will introduce you with the market generally, okay, with this industry. Tomorrow, I will tell you about trading styles, like what you can choose, how to choose, what is better and what is worse for you. And after that, I will tell you the main concept of technical analysis. And only after that, we'll start learning market structure, how to do analysis, how to trade, when to put your stop loss, take profit, etc. So that's it. So be patient. First three lectures. It's about introduction to this industry. And after that, technical information. Because, you know, like I can easily, I can do that. I have no problems with it. I can start talking about market structure. I can say that. You know, here we have um, say out because of a uh, domino effect of market maker manipulation. So what do you understand from this? Okay, you can uh, learn what is a fake out, but who is the market maker? What is the domino effect? So all this stuff we're going to learn uh, together in these three first lectures. So yeah, that's it. Couple of words about me. If you don't me, why? If you don't know me, like, uh, yeah, I was graduated from United States, uh, New York um, University's Team School of Business, and I have about more than 20 years of experience. In more details, uh, information about me, you can get from yeah directly from me if you can if you will message me. So yeah, what I'm going to do today? Today I will explain you the in the main industry. After that, we're going to do daily analysis of NASDAQ of US stock market. After that, I will do analysis of daily recommendation that I'm giving you and we'll conclude all previous recommendations. And by the end of today's lecture, I'm going to answer to all your questions. So I will give you about 10 to 15 minutes. If you have any questions, you're free to ask them. Here we go. So today's topic is about general introduction to trading and investing. Yeah, I will tell you the main concept of this industry. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first question that you may ask me, what is trading and investing? So it's uh, so simple. Look, that is the process of buying and selling of something at an interested price by two parties and that two parties are buyers and sellers but you may ask you what is the purpose of all this all right i'm buying and selling like but why quite easy to profit when the price is changing so no matter are you a trader or investor you're buying or selling something with your interested price in order to take some profits when price is changing so remember this because it's important, okay? A little bit later, we'll talk how you are profiting from all this stuff. The next question that you may be asking me as a beginner is, what is the difference between trading and investing? So look, they are exactly the same buying and selling. But here, there are, like, there are some differences. Like, 
when you invest, you buy or sell only for a long time or for long term. So we used to say in this industry, long term, though it's exactly the same thing as a long time. So do not be confused about this word, okay, about this term. It's same thing as long time. So you're buying only for long term. But what is the long term in terms of this industry? So long term, it is at least from six months, okay? One more time, when you are buying, okay, something or starting short positional trading or in other words, selling for six months or more, you're investing. If it's less than six months, then we used to say that it's a trading, not an investing, okay? So it can be one year, it can be two years, three, five, 10, how much you want, but at least six. six. Next. You're interested in the gradual change of price. So what is a gradual change in price? So let's say we buy Apple stocks. And the current market price for one share is $169. Okay, so let's say this is the graphic. And current market price is $169. Here we go. Because of some reasons, we're not interested in currently for this example, what reasons, but because of some reasons, it can be negative news, high supply, or other external factors that can affect the price performance. Price is falling down, okay, and hitting here, let's say $150 level. $150. Here we go. And this happening up to Friday. So one more time. When you saw this on Monday, all right, that the price is on the level of 169, but during the weekend we got, uh, do, do, during the week we got some negative news and price is falling down to $150. So you as an investor are not interested in this falling because this is a short term price fluctuation or in other words, local price movement in specific time period. That specific time period is from Monday to Friday. So this is fa this falling is not for a long term. It's not general falling. It is just falling in that one week. So when you're an investor, you don't care about this. But what is your main focus on, you may ask me? Your main focus is on general market value. So remember, very important uh, thing that might, can it will help you in all your trading and investing life. So market price and value are absolutely different things. So if Apple stock for Q and period is in falling, but you are doing some fundamental analysis, you can easily understand that this is just a local downtrend. And in future three years, Apple stock will be really valuable. So, by the way, this is not a recommendation. I'm just not telling you uh, that it will be valuable or no. It's just an example. Even so, that's what we call a general movement of market wallet. It's about understanding how valuable your financial instrument will be after one year, after two, three, or five years. So, let's conclude what is investing and move on. So, investing is when you are buying or selling at least for six months, or in other words, for a long term, you're interested only in gradual change in price. So you're not interested in local price movements in specific time period. If from Monday to Friday, or from, oh, let's say Tuesday to next Wednesday, price is falling, you're not interested in that stuff because it's just for a local time period, all right? I hope you understand that. So your main focus is on general value. You're focused on, all right, what will happen in next six months? Not today, not tomorrow, not on next week. What will happen in the next six months, one year or two years? That's about investing. Next, what is a trading? So during trading, you're interested in here and now. You do the same action, I mean, buying or selling for a short time period up to medium time period, okay? Short time period, it can be even five minutes. Yes, like you can buy and sell after five minutes. So you're buying right now after five minutes, you're selling. 
it's what we call a scalping. You will learn that tomorrow. Or you can buy and hold maybe for a couple of weeks. So from short term, which can be a couple of minutes, to middle term, which can be a couple of months, up to six months. If it's higher than six months, what it is, it's an investing. Here we go. So yeah, so if it's not a six months and higher, it's a middle term. And if it's six months and higher, then it's a long term, okay? So during trading, you're buying and selling from short to middle term and interested in local and current changing of price. Remember, I bring you an example with Apple stock that on Monday, the price was on $169. So here we go. Let's say that it was $169 and it was falling down and hitting on Friday $150, okay? So as a uh, trader, you're interested in that movement because you want to profit from the falling. But if you're an investor, you are not interested in that movement. This is a lock hill movement. You're interested in general value, but as a trader, you're interested what the price will do today, what the price will do tomorrow, what is going to do next week, et cetera. Okay, I hope you understand that clearly. So yeah, let's move on. So let me choose you for uh, like for you another stock. Okay, let's say Tesla, for example. So Tesla in this period, I guess I'm not a guess. I know that we yeah, had it's a downtrend, like externally. So even we can choose a one day time frame. So yeah, let's wait until we will load it. Here we go. What you can see, like currently we're in downtrend. So like the current market price is $174. And you as a trader are interested what the price will do tomorrow. It will fall downside or it will rise. So here we can see like you think what it will do next. It will move to downside or it will rise. So as a trader, you're interested in this. But as an investor... You are not interested in what it will do tomorrow or, I don't know, like maybe in, uh, after two, three days. You're interested generally when this downtrend will be ended and when generally the price will enter uptrend. All right, so this is the main difference. Here we go. So local uh, price movement in specific time period is your main focus. General movement of market value is not your main focus. But also, you as a trader need to understand what generally financial instrument is doing. So you need to understand some phases and tendencies of the market, like generally what is market doing to understand how massively price can rise or fall. But in fact, it's not your main focus. Your main focus is a local price movement. Remember that. So... Well, we shortly can say that like this entire industry is powered by two factors. You already know that from investing and trading details explanation. And that two things are buying and selling orders. And these actions are caused by such a concept as a supply and demand. If we have a high demand, there are a lot of interested buyers. Okay, so remember this it will be really helpful for understanding next concepts, okay? Just remember, whenever we have high demand, there are a lot of buyers. If supply is high, there are a lot of interested sellers. One more time, remember it, because you will learn this in details in future our lectures, okay? But you may ask me why this wall industry is uh, like a really complicated industry, live on just buying and selling. Answer is really simple because that's what makes the price move on daily basis. Remember the phrase daily basis to rise from Monday to Tuesday, from Tuesday to Wednesday, to fall down from Wednesday to Thursday, etc. But with, with like but what makes the price to move in general, let's say in one month or one year? So in larger periods, economical and technical factors also influence price movement. So for instance, and employment rate, GDP growth, inflation rate, interest rate from central banks or feds, all these factors can play a crucial role on general price movements. But on daily basis, buying and selling is the only thing that moves the price. Okay, remember this. And the next question that you may ask me is how like is buying and selling move the price? Look, 
It is the psychology of exchange and trade that goes back a longer way. Let me bring you an example with, let's say, lemonade, okay? So let's say you open the bar and you're, you're selling lemonades. So your lemonade is really tasty. Everyone likes it and wants to drink it again and again, and especially in the summer. So there are a lot of buyers. When you have a lot of buyers, it's indicating that there's a high demand for your product. So what's happening next? You, as a supplier of lemonades, understanding that there is a high demand for your product. Everyone wants to buy it. And I want to make more money. So you think about that. What you are doing, you're rising the price of your lemonade to make more money. Let's say that the cost of lemonade was $1. Now you're selling that for $2.30. So what technically happens? Technically, a lot of buyers, a lot of buying orders make the price to rise. Not directly, yeah, but this is the factor that makes it. Like, in effect, a lot of buying orders make the prices to rise. Now let's talk about selling orders, okay? Like how it makes the price to fall. So let's say you rise the price up to the $2.30 for a bottle of lemonade. Everyone is continuing to buy. You think that even for $2.30, they are continuing to buy it. So you think about rising prices up to $5 in order to make even more money. But now for $5, there are fewer buyers. But yeah, the taste of your lemonade is same. Everyone likes that, but it's not that good to spend $5 per one bottle. Yeah. And a group of people still buying it, but compared to the previous amount, uh, you have fewer buyers. And when you have fewer buyers, it means that you have a lower interest so what's happening next? You understand that your lemonade is absolutely the same. Everyone likes it. But for some reasons, you have fewer buyers. Why? Let's think. Mm, because of this, this, this. All right. Because price is too high. No one is interested in that price. So you, as a supplier, realizing that and starting to lower the price and attract more buyers. All right. What's happening next? Unfortunately, I can't explain the next stage with the lemonade example. So let's move on and talk about our industry, about stocks, but everything working in the same way. So let's repeat. If there are a lot of buyers for that exact stock, then there is a high demand for it. Supplier of that stock realized and started to rise the price in order to make more money. Prices rising and rising and finally hit some price level. But on that exact price, there are fewer buyers and there, there's a low, low interest. And now supplier is realizing that the stock is no one buying anymore. So he's lowering the price to attract more buyers. But remember that the investors like who both okay, stocks for cheap price. They see that for some reasons, price is falling here. They see that clearly, okay? So why they need to hold this stock, which price is falling? So why? Can you answer me? You, you will hold something uh, like if you're a trader, not investor. If you're a trader and you see that price is significantly falling down and yeah, there is no reasonable uh, things, factors that make that falling. Will you hold that position? No. So they will not do that as well. So they are starting to sell to fix their profits and to not lose money. And a lot of sales are creating high supply. High supply on its own is creating affordability conditions. Affordability is creating devaluation. So let me explain you with example. For example, Laura Piana. I'm pretty sure you know about that brand. So if they will start selling their t-shirts or maybe their loafers for $50, everyone will start buying Laurel Piana and it will lose its value. Yeah, it's still a high quality brand, but everyone is wearing it. Everyone. That situation is creating affordability and affordability automatically creates a devaluation. And that's how just buying and selling orders make the price to move on daily basis.
I hope you understand that. So a lot of buying orders. Here we go. Like make directly the price to rise. Fewer buyers make the supplier to understand that, you know, kind of why well, not interested in this price is lowering the price. These traders who both that financial instrument see this, they are starting to sell. One selling is creating another, another occur selling is creating high supply, high supply is creating affordability, affordability is creating derelation. So price is continuing to fall down, falling, falling, falling until the price is cheap. And now we have again a lot of buying orders because the price is cheap. Supplier of asset again is realizing that now we have a lot of buyers. Again, starts to rise the price. Price is rising, he's making uh, more money. The price is rising, 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 hitting a really um, expensive or a point, uh, buyers are uh, becoming fewer. He's lowering price. Seller traders are selling, and it's kind of chain. Okay, it's a kind of chain that is repeating every single time. I hope you understand that. Let's move on. So traders use the system to make money. Look, they know that if there are a lot of buyers, the price will go up. So they see a high demand, there are a lot of buyers, and soon price will rise. And they are buying and waiting for the price to rise. When price is already rising, they are selling for a higher price to take their profits. And this style of trading we call a long positional trading or just long. So let's say on $10, here we go, let me bring you a good example. Let's say this is our 10 yeah, that was great drawing. <laughs> like this is $10. Okay, so traders see high demand on this level. So they are buying with $10 and wait until the price will rise from $10. Let's say now it's rising and hitting $50. Here we go. And they are taking profits. What is their profit? Their profit is $40. They bought for 10, they sold for 50, so 50 uh, minus 10 will be 40. So whenever you're buying cheap to sell it more expensive price, you're going for long. Remember that because I'm going to use this term in for a lot of times. But also they know if there are a lot of sellers, the price falls. So they see a high supply, they are borrowing an asset from their broker, they are selling for a higher price. After that, they are waiting the price to fall. And when the price falls down, let's say from $50 to 10, they are starting to buy for a lower price. Okay. With what capital, you may ask me. They got a capital when they sold this borrowed asset from uh, for higher price. So they are buying and returning borrowed asset back to their broker and taking their profits. Here we go. And this style of trading we call short or short positional trading. Oh, yeah. So I know that from the very first time, it's kind of hard for understanding. So that's why I will bring it for you a good example. Okay. So there we go. Let's take a look at this example. So based on your analysis, you understand that soon Apple stock will, uh, like Apple stock price will fall down. Okay. But you, as a regular trader, can't trade or invest without brokers. Okay, you already know that, so you need to have a platform and broker to trade. Yeah, here we go. So you are borrowing Apple shares, let's say 10 shares. Uh, and in future, you need to return him that shares. Okay, so you have broker to trade on uh, that financial instrument but without a broker we can't do that so you are going to your broker page okay and borrowing 10 apple all right here we go 10 apple shares okay it can be ac apple shares here we go and remember you borrowed that you're not buying you're borrowing so in future you need to return this and be attentive not equivalent dollar amount, exactly 10 shares. Whatever the price will be, you borrowed 10 shares, you return 10 shares. Then you may ask me, why broker is giving me that asset? Because you are paying fee for that. 
it's not just for free for free you can't just call him say hey buddy uh can you please uh borrow me 10 apple shares no your contact mean yeah you say hey buddy i need 10 apple shares he says you all right man like give me two three dollars it's our fee and i will give you 10 apple shares but you need to return me this so here we go as i told you you bought 10 apple shares and paid a fee for that and current price per share let's say it's a 50 dollar okay yeah. so here we go current price is 50 dollar that's it next Let's say uh, you are kind of selling all that stuff. So yeah, after that, you're selling 10 shares for $50 per share. So if you have 10 shares and cost of one share is 50, totally you're getting what? You're getting $500, okay? So this is your uh, kind of capital after selling. Now you have this after selling here we go yeah. so now let's say the price is falling from fifty dollars to thirty dollars per share so you did analyze this and you understand that it's happening so now the price is thirty dollars per share what you're doing now you are buying back these 10 shares for three hundred dollars because current price is thirty dollars So you're buying that 10 shares for $300. Shares, here we go. What's happening next? So now, what do you have? From selling, you got $500 and paid $300 from each to buy back. And $200 will be your profit. And this is what we call a short positional trading. So you have $200 that seat and 10 shares in your portfolio so what you're doing next so you are returning that 10 shares to your broker and you got 200 dollars in your pocket and this is what we call a short positional trading i hope you understand that so these are the very basics. I hope you clearly understand them. And this concept of operation is working with any trade and investors are using that system. And all these processes are now automated with help of smart system. Now the price arises and falls itself depending on the market situation. And all this uh, happens through exchanges where you can do trading in automated platforms, sitting at home or whenever you want to sit. So one more time, it's not a system where a lot of people sitting in front of their computer and they are calculating all right. Like here we have one buyer, two, three, for 100, 1,000, 1 million. Oh my God, 1 million buyers. Okay, Jimmy, I know 1 million buyers. We need to rise the price not right now. Go, go ahead, go. No, no, it's not working in that way. Everything is now automated with the help of smart systems. And that smart systems are integrated in the exchanges. Now let me explain you what are the exchanges and what types of exchanges, or in other words, what types of markets we have. So look, Exchange is where buying and selling orders are both together. In simple words, that is just a place where you can buy and sell financial instruments. It can be, I don't know, dollar, euro, stock, and whatever you want, okay? Here we go. So in past, exchanges had buildings and people setting them performed the exchange process. In our days, they still exist, but in most of cases, they are working for institutional players. Now, online trading and investing is more popular with the help of automated platforms. And each exchange has its own platform where you can like trade sitting at home. Now you know what is an exchange, how it looked like before, how it looked like now. So now, yeah, you know all that stuff. Let's talk about the main types of exchanges, okay? But remember that uh, we don't say types of exchanges. We say types of markets. So yes, still technically it's a type of exchange, but in trading terminology, we say type of market.
And the first type is commodity market. It is the place, I mean exchange, where you can trade with goods. So instruments for trading are goods, like uh, such as valuable metals like gold, silver, etc. Simple metals, raw materials like oil, gas, or agricultural goods like wheat, grain, coffee, etc. All right. And if after the end of our project, after learning all that stuff about technical analysis, etc., you will decide to trade with commodity market, not with stock, or not with crypto, not with forex, exactly with commodity. I highly recommend you to trade only and only with valuable metals and raw materials. Why? You may ask me. Because they are moving 24 hours, uh, five days per week and they have a wide range of price movements. So they are not just moving for a couple of cents or no, they are really widely moving and that's really good. So I highly recommend you to do this. That's it. The next market is the most popular market in the world and it's a stock market. It's a place or exchange where instrument of trading are securities. But what are the securities? It can be stocks, indexes, bonds, packages, and portfolios. So you can't go on commodity market and trade with stocks. No, you have stock market for that, okay? And before moving to the next market, you need to know a really important thing about stock markets. They work for a limited time. Why? Basically, stock markets are led by the economies of the country. The exchange opens in the morning according for the local time of its country, has a lunch break and closes in the evening. So for instance, if you want to check the price of Tesla share at night by United States time, it will not move because the price closed at the evening. But why? Look, when you are trading with stocks, you give your money to the company, in other words, yeah? You're investing in company. And these companies are registered as, the, as an organization in their country, for example, in United States. Those, the company depends um, on the country's economy because it's the part of that economy and it's working based on the time zone of that country. So that's why stock market works for a limited time. So one more time, stock market is opening at the morning of that country. Then it has a lunch break time based on the time of that country and market is is closing at the evening of that country. So one more time, you want to check that, you want to trade with Tesla, you can trade with Tesla uh, started from morning by United States up to lunch break time and after lunch break time up to evening. But when at evening market is closed, you can do that. Yeah, technically you can buy, but the price will not move. So you're buying and nothing is happening. You're not trading, you're just buying that. Okay, it's, and based on this all information that you understand, I mean, about time, uh, Walmart is divided into four main trading stations. So Pacific trading station, Asian, European, and American. So Pacific trading station is a trading station, for example, for Wellington stock market or Sydney stock market. With Asian trading station, it's, for example, Indian stock market, Hong Kong stock market, Singapore stock market, okay? With European trading station, for example, is for Frankfurt stock market, London stock market. And American say, trading station, we're interesting in this one. Yeah, you can still, you know, as a European trader, will be interested in European trading station, but mostly we're going to be focused uh, in American trading station. So Americans say a trading station is for New York stock market and Chicago stock market, okay, mainly. So remember that stock market is not a general one thing. There are a lot of different stock markets. Stock market for India, stock market for Russia, stock market for China, stock market for America, for Great Britain, a lot of stock markets, and they are working based on their country time. Next. The next market... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's a derivative market. It's a place or exchange where instrument of trades are contracts, such as options and futures. How to trade with them, we're going to learn in our future lectures. It will be really interesting. Trust me. So, yeah, be patient and wait for that lecture. 
Next market, it is the foreign exchange market or just Forex, where the trading instrument is the mark of like uh, trading instrument are the currency pairs, such as Euro USD, USD to Great Britain pound, Japanese yens to New Zealand dollars, I don't know, UIA dear hands to Russian rubles, okay, whatever you want. And in this market main participants are banks in most of cases i mean big main big participants are banks and that's why sometimes we call forex market interbank market so if you will listen from someone i'm trading with interbank market do not be surprised it is the same as forex same thing just different names here we go yeah like Previously, in previous markets like stock market or commodity market, main big players are not banks. There are other financial institutions, other financial institutions, but in forex market, big players are banks because they are accumulating switching currencies. Okay. Also, you need to know that the forex market is decentralized. It's not related to the economy of a particular country, and it's not a subject to local restrictions. So forex market is not controlled by United States, by Great Britain, by China. So currencies that are listed in forex, they are controlled by the central banks or feds, uh, feds of their countries. But general market is not controlled. So for example, if there are now, there is a crisis in the United States, and all our big companies are falling in price, I mean, U.S. companies. Well, the U.S. stock market will be in strong downtrend, but the Forex market will not fall because of that crisis. Yes, the dollar will change something in the Forex market, but not the world market, okay? That's it. The next and the last main type of market is decentralized market. So an instrument for trade here are decentralized assets such as cryptocurrencies, stable coins, DeFi, these decentralized finances, and other tokens. And a lot of be beginners, for some reason, think that decentralized market is only about crypto. No, in decentralized market, we have different variants for trading. Uh, we have decentralized identities to trade it's a technology i like trading with that i will show you how i'm trading in advanced section of our project by the way know that decentralized assets market is not only about crypto and uh, nft it's also about decentralized market but technically it is art market okay yeah technically art market generally it's decentralized asset here we go so these are the main uh, markets that you need to know for now. Uh, these are the main market types. So let's conclude. Okay. And after that, I will tell you about main participants in exchange process. So there's a commodity market where trading instruments are goods such as oil, uh, gas, silver, gold, wheat, etc. There's a stock market where trading instruments are stocks, indexes, bonds. There's a forex market where trading instruments are currency pairs. There's a derivative market where trading instruments or contracts such as futures or options. And there's a decentralized market where trading instruments are cryptocurrencies, DeFi, CIVIS, governance tokens, stable coins, etc. That's it. So these are the main types of market, but also there are other markets such as real estate market, uh, e-art market, which was really popular in 2020, and I'm talking about NFT. So you can trade in stock market. So yeah, you can't like if you think that you can trade this top market with NFTs, no, there is a different market for NFT and different platforms for it, such as OpenSea, which was the most popular NFT platform in 2020. All right, I hope you understand that. Now you know what are the exchanges, how they are working, what types are there, and with what financial instruments you can trade in that market. Next, let's talk about market participants. It's not only about markets, you need to understand who are the main participants. So the first participant uh, is the most important player. And these are the central banks, not the central bank of particular country. I mean, the central banks of different countries. And these are the important players because they are accumulators of their country funds. So they are accumulating dollars, e-dollars, euros, pounds, yuans, and other main currencies. So they are not speculating. They are not taking some profits from this. After accumulation in future, they will speculate with that funds with commercial banks. That is uh, like, and also 
they can influence the exchange rate of their country currency uh, by a rising and lowering interest rate, okay? So let's say you're a trader from maybe Italy or Germany, so you're trading with Tesla stock. What you're paying to buy Tesla stock? Euro? No, you're paying dollars. So if U.S. will change an interest rate, the price for Tesla stock will be the same, but you as a foreign trader from Italy will pay more. For the same price, you, are, you will pay more. So one more time, these are very important players because one of the key economic factors depends on the central banks of the countries. Okay, they can easily change the price without actually changing the price. Yeah, that's the paradox. The next main players are commercial, private banks, and other financial institutions. So they are really important players uh, as well. But the main difference from central banks is that central banks are accumulating positions. These financial institutions are speculating. And they are doing speculative actions. But what is a speculative action? Whenever you're buying cheap to sell for expensive or vice versa, you're shorting, it's a speculative action. So whenever you're entering long or short, it's a speculation. And these financial institutions or commercial banks are doing exactly that. And due to their high volume of trades, they're influencing the price. So remember I told you that when uh, we have a lot of buyers, the price is rising. A lot of sellers, the price is falling. You already learned that. But in fact, I don't mean people. I mean buying orders and selling orders. Not buyers, not sellers, only orders. And just one financial institution can put 20 million buying orders. But 100,000 retailers, regular traders like me, you and other people, they can't put it. So understand that orders are more important. And you know that banks and financial institutions like BlackRock, JP Morgan, OneGuard, they have billions of dollars. So if they have billions of dollars for your business, you have that, okay? You can spend that billion dollar for buying financial instrument and selling after buying. And can you just understand buying orders for $1 billion? It's not a million shares. It's not a 5 million shares. It's not... A, like 10, it's more than 10 million shares, even 100 million shares. So they can influence the price performance by putting a lot of buying and selling orders. And they are considered to be an important players. That's why, okay? The next main participants are exporting companies. So these companies are engaged in the sale of goods outside their country. Their activities include receiving revenue in foreign currency and further handling it. And they also have a large volumes of buying and selling. So it's easy for them to influence the price, especially in the commodity market. So let me bring you an example to make easier for you to understand. So for example, before the tension between Russia and the Ukraine, Russia was selling a lot of oil and gas to Europe and the United States as well. Same with Saudi Arabia. So what they are doing, they're selling oil and gas, or in other words, goods of their country out of their country. And when they are selling to Europe, how they are receiving the payment? In the rubles, in dirhams? No. They are receiving it in euro. And in future, they are deciding how to handle that payment. And payment in that industry is not a million dollar, okay? It's a millions and billions. So they are not doing speculations like other financial institutions. No, they are selling goods and they are receiving payment in foreign insurances and handling them. That's why they are really important players. And they are deciding they can handle in one way or in another way. And because of they are, they have billions of that foreign um, currency, they can do whatever they want, okay? That's it. And all, all, of course, they can also change the price of car in commodity market. They can change the price of oil gas because, yeah, they are suppliers. That's it. The next one is not a really big influencers, but uh, important players as well. So funds like investments, investment funds, patient funds, etc. Even insurance companies, okay? Here we go. Like, and these are influencers in debt market or in obligation industry. So they are engaged in long-term speculations, and this mainly happens in the debt market. For example, like how patient fund is working. Do you know that? It says, hey, give me 10% from your salary for 60 years, and when you will retire, I will pay you even more. So it takes from you money 
generating from your given money more money and pays you percents from that. How by it? But how is generating that uh, money? Is doing that long term speculations, okay? The next participants are brokers. And for us, for regular traders, brokers are extremely important because without brokers, we can't trade. Like they technically make it possible for us to perform trading operations on our accounts. So, all right. So brokers have three functions, okay? First one is the mediation or in other words, broking. So they connect the liquidity provider or supplier and then uh, and they're regular trader, okay? So first one, mediation or broking, they're connecting liquidity supplier or supplier and a regular trader. Like why, how, for what? So let me bring you an example, like with supermarket. So let's say you want to buy a Coca-Cola and there is a supplier of Coca-Cola, yeah? Like the Coca-Cola Corporation. So you want to go and buy a bottle of that drink. Can you go and just ask for one uh, like ask or buy one bottle of Coca-Cola from supplier. You can't because supplier is not interested in you. It's not interested in selling just one, two, 10, 100, or even 1,000 bottles. He's not interested in that. So if you want to buy one or 10 bottles, you need to go to the supermarket, buy one bottle or a Coca-Cola. So here, supermarket is playing the role of broker. It's buying a lot of bottles from supplier, thousands of bottles and then selling you one bottle two three five in the supermarket okay and brokers are doing the same thing connecting liquidity supplier and regular trader together with this function they can earn on commissions and or spread so if previously uh, our yeah uh, institutions are speculating or accumulating to profits here this dude this broker that is what doing he's just connecting and for that he takes fees or spreads so i'm pretty sure you already know what are the commissions whenever you are buying let's say amazon stocks for your board here we are paying fees for that but what is a spread you may ask me so spread it is the difference between buying price and selling price so well, let me explain you to you to you how it is working uh like let's say we have a car okay this is our Porsche Taycan. Yeah, by the way, I'm the best in drawing. You already understand that. My apologies for this car. Here we go. This seller car. You bought that for $10,000. All right, no, you can't buy a Porsche for $10,000. Let's say for $90,000. Okay, 90K dollars. Here we go. You're driving that, and actually, you understand that, you know, I don't like Porsche. Yeah, actually, why you don't like Porsche, I don't know, because that's a great car. But let's say you don't like it, and you want to sell that. So uh, you think that you can sell that for a little bit more to buy you, let's say, I don't know, uh, Aston Martini or maybe Bugatti. So here we go. You're selling that for $100,000. 100k you bought that for 90,000 you sold that for 100,000 can you see that here is the difference between price and that difference is ten thousand dollars ten k dollars and exactly this 10k it is your spread difference between buying price and selling price okay so in case of Amazon stocks, you really think that you're directly buying Amazon stocks for Amazon Corporation? No, you're buying it from your broker. So whenever you're buying Amazon, Apple, you, you think that you give that directly to corporation? No, you give that money to your broker. So broker is getting licenses that are allowing him to buy financial instruments directly from suppliers such as Amazon. So let's say Amazon deciding to sell new 5 million shares. Brokers are contacting Amazon Corporation and they are buying from them 5 million shares. For example, like broker is buying $5 per one share. But if he wants to buy from bro broker one that uh, Amazon share, he will sell it to you for six, not for five dollars. And that one dollar is broker's spread. Okay.
So fees, commissions, and spread. The first function, they are earning with that stuff, okay? Let's move on. Second function, next function of brokers is the credit function. They give opportunity to increase the trading volume of retailer traders. This is what we call a leveraging, by the way. You will learn this in uh, details and really details how to use that correctly in our future lectures. So for example, if, you lever if your leverage is one to 10, it means that every dollar that uh, from your capital you put in case of profits will be 10 times more. And in case of losses, every dollar will be 10 times more as well. So one more time, it kind of credit function. If you don't have, let's say, $10,000 to trade, you have only 1,000. You can take one to 10 leveraging and every single dollar that you put for trading is multiplied by 10. So you put 1,000, you're trading 10,000. And if you lose, you're losing $10,000 instead of 1,000. And if you win, instead of 1,000 winning, you're winning 10,000. But remember that the risks are huge, so use this accurately, and I highly recommend you even to not use this before our lecture, okay? And the last function is an informational. So brokers provide trading platforms through which traders for Porsches or sales take place, okay? And also they provide analytical portals, uh, forecasts, and informational support. And these are the main three functions of the brokers. And there were a last uh main participant in the exchange process are retailers or in other words just regular traders or regular investors even if you have millions of dollars and you are trading with your own systems you are a retailer you will become an institutional player only if you will open a financial company and you will receive special licenses without them you're a retailer so we retailers were doing speculative actions with help of brokers and platforms and retailers are divided into four main types. On the next lecture, we will learn in details all trading styles, and I will help you to choose a relevant trading style for you. Don't worry. But let's, in short, talk about these main types today. Types today. So the first types are, are scalpers. They make a large number of trades within the daily trading session, like 100 trades or even more per one day. You may ask me, what the hell? Why? Because the profits from one trade is not big of the small range of the price movement. But because of the large number of trades, they make good profits. So one more time, scalpers are traders who hold their positions not more than a couple of minutes. And if that, that minutes, unfortunately, price is moving in short ranges and one trade usually brings just $1 or even a couple of cents. So to make good money, they are doing 100 and even more trades per one day. And each trade can be a couple of minutes or even a couple of seconds. Next type are day traders. Day trading, like their, their trading station here, here is not longer than one trading day. But remember, when I say one trading day, I mean not 24 hours. I mean six to seven hours because trading day is from six to seven hours, not 24. So these are the traders who are doing analysis and holding their positions for one trading day. Next type like swing traders or middle-term traders. So their trading station is from one day or between days to weeks. And in this trading style, uh, day is 24 hours. In day trading, day is six to seven hours. Here, it is 24, okay? So these are traders who hold their positions for 24 hours or for a couple of weeks or days. Next and last type of investors uh, that are in the, of uh, retailers are investors or long-term traders. These are traders who hold their positions in case of long-term trading from couple of weeks to months. And if you are an investor, you're holding positions at least from six months. It can be a year, three years, five, etc. But at least six months. And they have a really uh, high profit due to long-time holding. So these are the four main types of retailers, like scalpers, swing traders, day traders, long-term traders, or investors. That's it. Now let's quickly conclude. Oh, I mean, yeah, the main participants of the exchange process. So there are central banks, commercial banks, and financial institutions, investment funds, exporting companies. And these four are important uh, main uh, participants. Why? Because all these four participants can influence the price really hardly. We call them market makers, but about them we'll talk in future lectures. That's it. Then there are brokers. So companies that are giving opportunity to retailers 
us, okay, to execute trades. So they are connecting us with liquidity supplier. And they are giving credit function, informational portals, et cetera, to help us. And last, participants are retailers or regular traders. Like these are individual traders like me and you. That's it. Next. As I said before, like the market is about buying and selling. You already understand that. And all market participants, except brokers, are doing that. But simply buying and selling based on our instincts won't make a good profit. We will lose our entire trading account. Therefore, participants are always looking for advantages in the market to trade. And to find like that advantages, participants use different psychology, different strategies, and different analyses for trading. And all this starts with analysis. So whenever you want to find some insights or advantages in the market to take profits, you need to do analysis. And for retailers, we have four main variants of analysis. The first and the most popular is the technical analysis. So it's an analysis method that is based on historical price movements and buying selling volume. Like what price did previously and what it uh, what is the volume of buying and selling for current period? And to do that analysis, okay, it is using various categories of indicators like oscillators, trend following indicators, trend lines, charts, patterns, market structure, Q level, etc. And all these you will learn in our future lectures, okay. So these are all tools of technical analysis. But what is the objective? What is the purpose of technical analysis? So it is to predict the price movement, determine the reversal points, and potential signals for entering and exiting the trade. And this analysis is a good analysis for scalpers, day traders, and midterm traders. So tomorrow, I will help you to choose the style, like you can be a day trader, scalper, or whatever you want. After choosing, you can understand that technical analysis is good for you. Technical analysis, no, I'm sorry, next method is the fundamental analysis. So it is based on the intrinsic value of an asset by studying the, its main economic, financial, and qualitative factors. It can be the economy of the industry, it can be financial conditions of the country, financial health of company, etc. And to do each fundamental analysis, like uh, are using financial re uh, reports, such as income report, cash flow statement, balance sheet, okay, I don't know, it can be a financial radius, industry analysis, a lot of stuff. Okay. So yeah, and it is using economic indicators also like as GDP growth or unemployment rate, interest rate, inflation rate, a lot of that stuff. And what is the objective for the fundamental analysis you may ask me like? Is to rate the true value of an asset and the potential for future growth or fee. And this is an analysis for long-term trading or investing. So if you will choose tomorrow to be an investor or a long-term trader, you need to choose fundamental analysis, okay? The next one is quantitative analysis. And to be honest with you, I'm in love with this type of analysis. It's a really good analysis type, but unfortunately, you as an individual trader need to be really smart to take profits from quantitative analysis because it requires not just regular, extremely hard skills, extremely hard. You can't even imagine how hard. And really big capital, huge capital, not $100,000, not like half of million, more than a million, okay? But if you will learn quantitative analysis, you can easily apply as an institutional trader for financial institutions like JP Morgan and gain good profits as I did previously before becoming an uh, independent trader. Yeah. So quantitative is type of analysis that is based on mathematical algorithm and statistical data. And to do analysis, traders use mathematical models, statistical algorithms, and historical price data. And all this is not about taking pen and paper and doing maths. No, this analysis is working only with complex systems. The objective of quantitative analysis is to develop and apply mathematical models in order to identify the regular price movements based on algorithmic trading. And it's good for medium-term to long-term traders. That's it. And the very last one is price action analysis. 
is the favorite type of analysis of a lot of beginners because, yeah, I, I don't know, for some reasons they think that price action analysis are better than technical analysis, but technically, technical analysis include uh, using price action, in, including price action analysis and external indicators. But by the way, so it is based on studying of raw movements and price patterns without relying on indicators and external tools. So in case of price action, traders are using only market structure, only raw movements, key levels, candlesticks, and that's it, and chart patterns, okay. So they are not using indicators such as RSI, MACD, et cetera, but by the way, you will learn them in future lectures. And the objective here is to interpret the psychology of the market, which is reflected in the price movement. And by understanding the language of the market, you can easily do that. So in case of technical analysis, traders are trying to determine the price. But in case of price action analysis, they are learning the language of the price. And it says to them what it will do. You don't need to predict. It says to you, OK, here we go. So yeah, these are the main types of analysis for retailers. Now let's talk about main differences that we're down for today. So the main differences are basic methods, using tools, and time periods. In case of technical analysis, basic method is historical price movement and volume data. In case of quantitative analysis, it is a mathematical and statistical data. In case of price section, it's a role movement. In case of fundamental, it is economic factors, like using tool, max difference, like technical analysis or using market structure, key levels, candlesticks, indicators, and other external tools. Quantitative uses only mathematical algorithms, more statistical data. Well, fundamental analysis uses financial reports, industrial analysis, et cetera. So a lot of like different using tools. And uh, third main difference is time period. So tactical analysis is good for scalpers, for day traders, and for mid-term traders. Fundamental analysis is good for long-term traders. Quantitative analysis is good for mid-term traders and for long-term traders. Price action is good for all types except for long-term, because the only analysis that investors or long-term traders need uh, um, to deal with the fundamental analysis. And these are the main differences. But the goal is the same, to identify an advantage in the market for trading. And these were main analysis in this industry for retailers. But before ending, I want to tell you really important things. Okay, look, these are all kinds of analysis. Are they are like engine of your car? If you don't have wheels or steering wheel, then you want to be able to drive. Therefore, risk management, trading psychology, and clearly defined strategies are also very important. It's not only about doing analysis. So we have a roadmap for beginner traders, okay? So first of all, you need to learn analysis. After that, we're going to learn trading psychology. Like trading psychology biases, how they are working, how to avoid them, etc. After that, you're going to learn the risk management because you can be a really good analyst and it can have a really strong trading psychology, but with bad risk management, you will lose all your money. So this is the step number three. The step number four is to form and create strategies of entering and exiting the uh, trades based on these three previous steps. It's like a puzzle, okay? A puzzle that consists of three details. In isolation, they are not giving us any bell, any anything valuable. You need to combine these three details of puzzle together to get the whole picture, and that whole picture is strategy, which is based on analysis, trading psychology, and risk management. And our project will be developed in this way. So... You can be patient, learn every single day, and trust me, you will become a high-qualified trader who can create his own trading strategies.